Welcome to the 2020 Presidential Race Review. I'm your host, Jessica Pong, and I'm broadcasting from home via Zoom due to the coronavirus pandemic. We are now less than six months away from the 2020 election, and it's come down to President Donald Trump and presumptive Democratic nominee Joe Biden. Uh, today, I have a historian and Columbia University lecturer with me, David Eisenbach. David, how are you doing? I know people have asked you this a million times, but how's your quarantine? Everything's going well, except my hair, which is why I'm wearing the Mets hat. So my apologies for that. I haven't had a haircut in months. Not the best, uh, not the ideal conditions right now, but um, Thank you so much for being on the show earlier this year. Um, it's been about two and a half months since we talked. And at that time, you told me that the election was going to be determined by the economy. Yeah. So um, Trump has always talked about how the economy is his strong point, And now the economy is tanked due to COVID. So what do you think about this? What's the outlook well, for Trump? Well, specifically, I was talking about the Dow. Uh, and remember, I said that if the Dow is above 20,000, I think Donald Trump's going to get elected below 20,000. I think he loses. Uh, mm -hmm. And we saw how the Dow came down, but then it managed to be pushed up by the uh, Federal Reserve basically going on a spending spree, buying ETFs and propping up the stock market. Where are we going to be in November is the question I left you months ago. Uh, right. And I still think it's unanswered. You know, is the stock market still up there with these outrageous levels of unemployment in a way that might protect Donald Trump come November? And you're a historian, so I wanted to get your take and just give us a little bit of a history lesson here. So um, COVID-19 shutdown has been compared to the Great Depression, and um, America's already seen Great Depression levels of unemployment. Um, President Herbert Hoover was criticized for not doing a good job um, combating that crisis, and he ended up losing the 1932 election to uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. So um, that was by a wide margin. So um, do you think this presidential election is shaping up to be a referendum on Trump and um, how he's handling the pandemic? Oh, yes, uh, it will be. But where are we going to be in November? I could think of two scenarios, one in which we don't really have um, much of a, a second wave of the virus. America does start to reopen uh, the infection rates, the, the death toll, uh, death rate goes down significantly. And Donald Trump is then seen as the hero who got us through uh, to the other side of this thing. Uh, the other possibility is that we open up too soon, the death rate, the infection rate goes back up, uh, and Donald Trump, right. like he's responsible for people dying uh, unnecessarily. And then on the flip side, President Ob uh, Barack Obama uh, got into office in sort of the beginning or the midst of the Great Recession. So um, a lot of people credited him and he got reelected, right? And to carrying the country out of the recession. Do you think that Trump has an opportunity to do that as well? As I said last time, I, I thought the coronavirus could be the straw that broke the camel's back. It right, basically popped the, the big, fat, ugly bubble that was the economy, uh, completely out of touch with the real economy. Uh, that existed before corona. Uh, now we've seen that it, that is a totally true, that there is a complete disconnect between the real economy and the, the stock market. Right. Uh, so, you know, will Americans say, you know what, it wasn't Trump's fault for the, the skyrocketing unemployment uh, and the, the crash in the economy? And do they give him a pass? That is quite plausible. Um, but again, that's kind of time will tell. We saw him survive the Mueller investigation, saw him survive impeachment. And then now the question is, is he going to survive the virus? Right. Yes, that's right. That's right. And I want to switch back, uh, switch gears to Biden. So since March, he's been sheltering in place at his home in Delaware, and um, he's turned his basement into a media center and doing things here and there. Yeah. But Trump's started to go back on the road. He's um, speaking at events, and Biden's still stuck in his basement. So yeah. uh, pe people think that tr some people think that Trump can self-destruct. But does Biden have to do something, or should he just sit back and and wait? Well, Biden's in a tough spot, right? Uh, Biden actually believes in science and listening to uh, the uh, I I infection uh, scientists. What do you do? Do you, do you say, you know what, even though I'm an elder American and even though the scientists are telling everybody and the politicians are telling everybody stay in place, shelter in place, especially people above the same age uh, as me, 
uh, I'm going to defy that and ignore that and go out and campaign. Well, Donald Trump can do that because he's not listening to the scientists. He doesn't want, you know, he's, he's totally dismissed them. And but he's not wearing masks and nothing. Yeah. What's that? And to me, you know, your average American looks at that and, oh man, he's an old man, Joe Biden, you know, sheltering in place. You know, that's not what I'm looking for in a president. That's not what your typical American looks for in a president. Donald Trump is embodying that go out and, and, and fight the good fight kind of attitude. And I think it's and gonna help. the strength help of Trump. America, the strength of the economy opening back up. That sort of can-do attitude. I'm just going out there and defying death. You know, it's almost like a Teddy Roosevelt light uh, sort of situation. Um, you know, Joe Biden looks scared down there in his basement. Well, with Biden, he's, um, is there anything he could be doing with social media or virtual things, innovating in any sense? I mean, he's behind Trump in the sense that Trump has way more social media followers. So he's already behind in that game. Uh, do you think there's anything that he could be doing to set himself apart or you're just sort of limited by the technology and the situation? Well, look, he's got to make news. And if you are a presidential challenger, you can make news just by issuing statements, criticizing the president, going after him. $1,200? It's an insult. Why isn't Biden screaming about that? So if I'm Trump, I think that it would, it's not a good strategy to say no to $2,000 checks per month. Uh, I mean, it's, it seems like if you want to get reelected, you should try to appeal to a wide electorate and everyone. Exactly, right? But actually, he can remain silent as long as Biden is silent. Well, thank you, David. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back with more of the 2020 presidential race review. Welcome back to the 2020 Presidential Race Review. I'm your host, Jessica Kwong, and I still have with me David Eisenbach. He's a historian and lecturer at Columbia University. Well, David, let's get a little bit more local here. We're in New York, and I want you to talk about the presidential primary. It will allow candidates like Bernie Sanders and Andrew Yang, who, by the way, was Andrew Yang's lawsuit uh, that got that prim primary reinstated, uh, mm -hmm. to pick up delegates, which might give them uh, some leverage come the uh, uh, nomination convention to push certain elements into the party platform and maybe uh, on the vice presidential pick. Well, thinking back to the Spanish flu, I mean, it's, it was a long time ago, but was there more or less turnout during a pandemic or it didn't really have a factor? By the time the fourth wave hit in 1920, when there was a presidential election, uh, the fourth wave was really, really weak. So we actually don't have anything in comparison uh, historic. So this is sort of a testing ground. It's the first time it's ever happened in this way. In many ways, in many ways, the testing ground. Yes. Mm -hmm. and David, you mentioned that you're disappointed or that Biden's strategy in the basement is lackluster right now. Uh, do you think that he is the candidate? Uh, obviously, he's the presumptive Democratic nominee, but is there someone else you think that could still come out of nowhere? He'd be a much more formidable candidate. Uh, Cuomo, a uh, Trump slugfest, a knife fight with these two guys from Queens could get be super better. Interesting. Yeah, it couldn't get any better. Right, it would actually be an exciting race, um, and it's funny because the virus set it up already, right? You see, well, and then there's the you know, no one would have thought about Andrew Cuomo. Right, coming <laughs> out of left field. <laughs> uh, but now he's you know America's sweetheart. Uh, you know he's become the <laughs> sex symbol. Uh, He's not running. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, so uh, look, dare to dream. Uh, I, I doubt it. I, I know that Cuomo is very serious about managing this crisis and making sure New York State gets through it. So, uh, you know, Cuomo doesn't have any interest in jumping in here and is biding his time. But, uh, you know, he's definitely thinking about 2024. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the 2020 Presidential Race Review. We'll be back next time, and in the meantime, stay safe and healthy at home.